Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to my channel. It is Christian here. You're tuned in for more of my two cents. If you are new to the channel, then welcome. Thank you so much for coming over here today. Hopefully you'll click around, stick around, listen to the discussion, enjoy it, and decide to, you know, join the two cent crew because we would love to have you. And if you are a returning two center, hey y'all, here I go. I heard you were looking for me, okay? Here I am. Here's my face. Um... I am excited to be here. I am, um, oh my goodness. I, I kind of like want to say sorry, you know, for not showing up in, you know, in person. But y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. And y'all still rocking with me. And for that, I appreciate you. Um, a little bit of a different scenery today. I am filming in my bedroom because my husband's upstairs in our offices share a wall. He is doing a branding boot camp this morning. He has a deep voice, and sometimes I feel like it be throwing off my thoughts, my thoughts when I be trying to record. So I'll be like, mm -mm. ain't no way I can be trying to talk over him in my head and then getting louder on his video. And y'all y'all probably won't hear him, but y'all gonna hear me getting louder and I'm be getting mad. So I was like, let me come downstairs and do it in here. And then, you know, I can have free reign to go up and down. I have free reign to increase my range. You feel me? Okay. Um, I know that y'all have been missing my face. Y'all have been like, where are you at, sis? We want to see your facial expressions. Well, here they go. Wow. There you go. Does that make you happy? I also had somebody ask me, was I with child? And I'm like... See, I ain't, did, I ain't said this line in a long time, but I'm going to have to go for it, okay? I'm going to have to go for it. I'm going to have to put it out there, even though I do not reference this character in my story. But Satan, I rebuke you, okay? No, I am not with the child. I am not with the lamb, honey. Let me see. Can I do it to the side? What I need to do? What I need to do to show y'all? Because mm -mm, I ain't got no stick to prove it, but I can let y'all know I'm not with child. <laughs> This is going to be a life update video, if you will. Um, I don't even want to say it. Like, I don't even want to say what I'm about to say because I don't like to, you know, I've been busy. Very, 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 very busy. And I'm about to get busier. Um, and so we're family over here on my channel. I like to, let me back this bench up because it ain't all the way up against the wall so let me I, boom there we go so it wasn't all the way up against the wall um i consider this channel to be a very candid and transparent platform like for me to express myself for me to share my thoughts my opinion that's why the channel is called my two cents and i enjoy doing that i discuss a lot of different topics specifically um religion spirituality um deconstruction all of those things i got this band-aid on y'all but i ain't really really hurt myself it was like a light cut but i'm good i won't take it off um and sometimes i do i mix you know personal development content i mix relationship content um some current trending topics that may not have anything to do with church but just overall topics for your for life you know for your journey for our journey and how i feel about certain things and a part of that is my personal growth and my personal journey and i think that while i do not intend to stake claim in the influencer industry at all or in the market i do understand that with having a platform comes a responsibility comes like some expectations for you to share and to show parts of your life um if you have gone about certain platforms the way that I have. I have not been a faceless channel since I started. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'm cool with that. I also like the flexibility and the, you know, the autonomy to choose which route I take my channel. And so I appreciate you guys for sticking with me while I figure things out, while I move things around, while things switch up in my life. And then you guys just continue to get the content the way you get it. You send me your questions, your topics, your, you know, your feedback and I can present that as well. But it's just really been a really nice progressive um, season for me. And there have just been some things that um, I definitely prayed for and asked for that are now here. 
and I'm not sad about it. I can't complain. I can't complain about not having time to do one thing because I'm doing something else that I asked for or I've always wanted to do. Um, I'm just grateful for it and I'm trying to balance it. And so that's where I am um, in life right now. I am definitely doing a, whoo, child, I'm doing, a, I'm doing, it's a balancing act. And I ain't even on a tightrope. I ain't on the tightrope. I got room, honey. I got room for the growth. I'm just trying to balance the growth. And um, it looks a little bit different for me. Um, I cannot act as if though my personal life and my business life does not often take over the other aspects that I try to pour myself into. And I'm okay with that. I do consulting and coaching and... <sighs> I really dialed back on doing that because time, you know, like time, it's not an automated process. I've automated a lot of my life, but I cannot automate coaching. I cannot automate consulting and talking to other business owners every week for an hour at a time and pouring into them. And it's a gift and it's a skill and I do it very well. Like when I turn that water faucet on, baby, the the strategy, the the information, it flows out of me so effortlessly and I enjoy doing it, but I have other parts of me that require that energy. And so I'm not able to really give my all to coaching and consulting like I was earlier this year or even last year. And so I pull back on doing that. Um, more opportunity has opened up for me with my business, with manufacturing. I am a whole manufacturer out here. If you guys don't know that, I have my own personal brand um, that... I am the CEO of and the company of the company and that is scaling and growing. We're actually getting ready to launch into over 400 national retail grocery store chains in late October, early November. And so I'll announce that once that happens too. And so we're scaling up our process and our production in order to do that, like to put all of my energy and effort into now having place in retail where people not just go order from my website but they can now go in stores and pick up on shelves and so that just requires a different part of my brain and a different part of my you know my life and my expectations and so i have to set those accordingly not to mention y'all me and my husband started homeschooling again in september so school started for our children we have a five uh, i was gonna say five she turned six september 11th we have a now six-year-old and an eight-year-old and so He's in third grade. She's in the first grade. My husband and I split our schedule. Like one of us teaches a subject while the other one's teaching another subject. You know, we're trying to fold that into our work schedule and we love it. We love it. I, again, I can't complain. These are things that I asked for. These are things that I wanted. These are things that I've always desired since I was an adult, since I've been a young adult. And to have these things unfolding, I'm grateful because I see how what a lot of people in church say, you know, uh, call those things that be not as though they were or write the vision and make it plain. I've done that for, for, for years when I didn't even know about manifesting, right? When I didn't even know that it was called um, uh, vibration or energy or any of that. I didn't know that I was attracting things to me, but I've always had these practices and these beliefs and these mindsets that I could do the things I desire to do. And now that I'm in full control of those things and I'm not like, you got to tie to get this or you got to sew to do this and you got to show up more to get that. Now that I don't have that mindset, I'm able to flow fully and direct, you know, my attention to the things I actually want to see present, presented and manifested in my life. And so homeschooling is one of those things. Um, we're a really, really close family. It's a family of four. My family is trying to get me to get, do one more, but it's a no. Okay. Um, <laughs> no more, no more over here. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited about that part of my life as well, which again, takes something out of me throughout the week to have to dedicate my time to slow down, to show up for my children, to show up for the future generations of the world, right? Because I'm literally taking on what usually a teacher would take on to teach children. I'm doing that. So I'm not just putting myself into my business or putting myself into my marriage or taking time out for myself, I'm also imparting and pouring into my children. And so I have to be balanced of mind, have clarity, have, you know, insight and wisdom on how to navigate that and deal with the things that usually teachers have to deal with. 
now it's on me now it's on my husband now we're getting together at the end of the day or the end of the week to discuss how one did in a subject versus the other subject or how was attention and how was interest and how were they progressing and what can we switch up and what can we implement next week and what can we remove and what can we just you know so all of that is working you know working in the background and it is teaching me a lot about myself and before September even started at the end of August, which this is the whole point of this video, right? So before September even started, I felt like, well, like at the very end of August, I felt like this pull, this need for me to center myself more. And you may be thinking, well, what does center yourself mean? Like for me to get more focus, for me to get more clarity, for me to unplug from certain things and to plug into other things. For me to, it almost felt like I needed to prepare myself. Like if you're going on a trip and you need to pack your bag or you need to go pick up some, you know, some underwear, some new underwear, some new socks, get you a little traveling toothpaste case, whatever you need. That's what I felt like I needed to be doing. And there were a lot of things going on. We, we were preparing to move into a new warehouse facility for our manufacturing and we needed to get a bigger facility so we could increase our capacity. And we were looking at spaces and things and I just was not excited. And this is our second warehouse. So we've had a warehouse before um, that we moved into in 2020 and loved it. It was great for us. Beautiful. First time having commercial property and I was over the moon about it. Excited. The process went so smooth and everything was so great. But this go around, now the, when we were, you know, in the process of looking for a new facility, things weren't popping. Like, I wasn't excited. I don't know what it was. I had everything I needed. I had the money to put, we had the money to put into it. We had the time. We had all of the things laid out. But I wasn't excited about what I was looking at when we were even meeting up with our realtor. Nothing was really sparking interest or the flame of excitement in me. And I, I was kind of concerned about it, but it was so many moving parts in life that I couldn't really focus on it. And I knew that I wasn't putting intentional energy into it. And so I kind of expected nothing because I wasn't putting anything into it. And so um, I took a trip to Atlanta to a event, to an event by um fearless by the fearless fund and i enjoyed myself immensely i had an opportunity to meet some women that i've been talking to online for three years only and i got to meet these women in person and we're business owners and we're just learning from each other and talking to each other and laughing and sharing our resources and information and it was like something just unlocked inside of me that was my first trip by myself you know, like for an event like that, my husband and I go everywhere together pretty much. And I really saw myself in the light that I am. You know, I saw myself in the light that I am. I was running into people who were like excited to meet me, who have been following my business online and, you know, following my journey. And I was like, what? Like, wait a minute. It's, it's amazing how you don't really... You don't always really think about who you are or what you do until someone like hits that refresh button on the page like, baby, this you, <laughs> this will be it. And so I felt that and I, I loved it and I was able to really tap into more of me. I was really able to see the version of myself that makes me happy, that makes me proud of what I get to do. And I felt my strength. I felt like, I felt so powerful. Like being on a trip by myself, going to the airport, picking up my car from Turo, um, doing all of that planning and preparation for myself, booking my room and checking in and bouncing in and out the room and meeting the girls and going out to dinner by myself in Atlanta. It felt really good for me. And I was like, this is something that I did not desire for myself, but this is something I'm grateful I am prepared for. And this is something that I'm grateful I'm not afraid of. And this is why I'm grateful that I've always been able to move myself out of situations that have not served me so that I can gain the, the confidence and the clarity to do these things for me. Because things are not happening to me. Things are not happening for me. Things are happening through me like I am the vessel right in which things actually manifest through where it is like present and viewable and you know uh real for other people to like see and so that made me really happy 
And at the end of that month of August, I just felt the need to realign, to readjust, to get back in place. And I didn't know what it was for, but I knew I needed to do it. And so a couple of years ago, when I had my first real spiritual awakening, if you will, I turned off TV for 30 days. I didn't watch any TV for 30 days. I barely did social media outside of my business page where we needed to post on social media. And I cleared my whole YouTube history and I only focused on content that... I okay, so I'm restarting the video here. I only focused on content that made me feel better and that poured into me and that gave me what I needed and it strengthened me and that was my first real experience with um I don't know how to say it but that was my first ex that was my first real experience with the spiritualism side versus the religious side and it felt good it felt really well for me and so I knew I kind of needed to get back to that place to where I could actually start seeing what I was saying or seeing what I was thinking without having to do too much hard work on it you know and so from September 1st to September 30th and I am filming this on October 1st so from September 1st to September 30th I meditated every single morning without cease. Every single morning, your girl was on her mat, just like this. Well, like this, really. That, that was me for 30 days. That's what I did. That's, how I, that's, that's what I did for 30 days. And some mornings it was for 20 minutes, some mornings it was for 10, some mornings it was for 12, 15, whatever I felt the need to do or however long I sat there, that's what I did. And when I tell y'all, oh my God, oh my God, when I tell y'all, it literally has been life changing. It has been for me. I can't speak for what 30 days of meditation will do for anybody else. I'm pretty sure there are people doing it every day already. But I know for me, I needed it. It was something that I am so glad I followed the, the unction. I followed the spirit. Like I followed what I felt that I needed that. And I, I kind of like liken it or, you know, correlate it to say like when your body has had so much heavy food and you've been eating bad and you know you just feel so ugh, like you just need to be cleansed right and then your body kind of craves fresh food like fruits or vegetables or salads or you know something that's not heavy that's what I felt I felt like spiritually I was really heavy I felt like I had a lot coming at me a lot going on where my energy was split I was trying to focus on, you know, so many different things and I wasn't focused on the whole bigger picture of being settled enough to handle what was coming at me and to see things as not only challenges, but opportunities to change. And I wasn't able to focus and see things for what they were. I was just handling things as they were coming. And that feels horrible. Let me be very clear. I was waking up with a knot in my stomach, with a, a lump in my throat. That's how I felt because I was like, oh, this is too much. Okay, today I got to do boom, 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 boom. And this just never ends. And I got to follow up with them and ask them this and get this from them. And they didn't respond to that. I didn't like how that was feeling. And so when I felt internally like I needed to bring myself back around, I needed to, you know, bring myself back in, I followed it. I didn't deny it. I didn't try to say, okay, well, I'll do every other day. Girl, you got 15 minutes. You got 15 minutes. You got 15 minutes. You got 10 minutes to center myself, to sit and focus for 10 minutes. I have time. I'll never not do it again. No matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, I will never not meditate again in the beginning of my day because of what took place in the 30 days that I did it. At first, I didn't really, I, I wanted to have expectations. Like I wanted to like set goals for my manifestation. Not, I wasn't even trying to manifest. So let me take that back because that would be inaccurate. I was not trying to manifest anything actually. I just wanted clarity. I wanted peace and I wanted to be able to flow in the things that I desired to see happen. I wanted to, um, have my mind unimpeded by intrusive thoughts 
or negative feelings. I wanted to have clarity so I could see things for what they were as soon as they were presented to me. I didn't want to have clouded judgment. I didn't want to feel like, oh no, that's not what that is. Oh no, that's not what's happening. I wanted to know immediately what I was dealing with so I could handle it the right way and not waste my time. And that was my true desire. It wasn't for money. It wasn't for things. It wasn't for people to pop up out of nowhere. It wasn't for opportunities. It was for alignment for in a, a, a piece like none other for clarity like none other for expectation setting like none other the ability to 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 set expectations like none other and so i did that i sat still for five for 15 20 10 minutes a day then i would read my affirmations then I would get up, start my day. Things would happen. Good things, challenging things. Now you'll notice I'm not saying bad things because none of this stuff is good or bad. None of this stuff is right or wrong. It's just life. And so I stopped seeing things as, like I told you, things happening to me and understood that things were happening through me because of me. Certain things have to fire off because of you. Certain things are going to fire off because you're aligning with, you're, you're calling to, attracting, allowing certain things to come into your experience. And so I understand that and I no longer look at it as God's will. God wanted this for me. Mm -mm. No, no, no. What did you want for you? What were you aligning yourself with? Because I think we get it mixed up and misconstrued when we say, Oh, that was God's will. No, you had a desire and an interest in it first. Give yourself credit for wanting a new job. Give yourself credit for wanting a new car. Give yourself credit for wanting a, a clean house or a new wardrobe. You wanted that. God's will is not for you to get a new, new, new car. That doesn't matter to your creator. What matters is your ability to believe you want it, you deserve it, and you can go get it. So a lot of times we put things off on God so that we don't have to really be accountable for whether or not it happens. You have every right, all the power and creative control of what is actually manifested according to how you align, attract and allow. And so, like I said, I wasn't trying to attract or create anything specifically. I just knew what I wanted more of and that was peace and that was clarity and that was the ability to handle things as they were coming at me with a straight, stable mind. And did I get that? Yes, I did. And I'm grateful for that. There were a lot of things that happened in September um, that could have jilted me, that could have pushed me down and I could have stayed down. Um, there were a lot of changes. There were a lot of um, opportunities. There were a lot of, oh, oh my goodness, like highs and there were some lows. There were a lot of revealing situations where I just had to see things and people for what they were and who they are and I didn't deny it I've never been one to deny when I notice truth um but I was able to act on it with such a peace not rah rah energy not I'm gonna get you told I'm gonna correct you I'm gonna put you in your place none of that none of that really resonates with me anymore because it's like what would that do for me? Nothing. I want to operate on such a peaceful, um, a peaceful play playing field. Child, I don't know why this light just went off like that. Let me see if I can fix it. Yep. It, child, it went off. Oh well. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I do what I want. <laughs> Cartman from uh, South Park. Yep, it went off. Anyway. Um I mean, I'm, I, the light is still lighting. Y'all can still see me. Um, so it just felt good. It felt really good to have that clarity. There were some things that I handled so beautifully because I was grounded. I was rooted. And let me explain. Let me explain something to you guys. So I know for me, hearing meditation my whole life from my mom, from people at church, I'm going to come a little bit closer since the light went off. Hearing the word meditate has always had a different connotation to me. Like I always thought meditation was something else because of the people who were using it, right? 
Um, and y'all know I like definition, honey. So let me get y'all one real quick. Okay. If I don't do nothing else, I'm gonna explain. I want to explain. Well, I want to give the definition of meditation, and then I want to explain to you guys how I meditate, so that you all know, you know, what they look like, because it's different for everybody. Let's be very clear. Meditation is not the same for everyone. Okay. Meditation is a practice in which an individual uses a technique such as mindfulness or focusing the mind on a particular object, thought, or activity to train attention and awareness and achieve a mentally clear and emotional calm and stable state. What? I ain't never read this definition a day in my life. And what did I just tell y'all I wanted from my meditation? It wasn't for the things, honey. It was not for the things. It was not for the things. It was for the peace, the clarity, and the ability to handle things that may come at me the right way. I I love it. I love it when I'm in alignment with the things and knowing what I'm practicing and why I'm practicing it. Because there's a lot of people out here doing stuff and they don't even know why they're doing it or what it means to do it or what they should be expecting from doing it. I, I don't like that. But that's why we do the definitions. Let's get back into it. Okay. To train attention and awareness and achieve a mentally clear and emotionally calm and stable state meditation is practiced in numerous religious traditions and is so growing up i used to hear my mom and pastors and people at church say you know meditate on the word day and night focus on you know focus on god bring your mind in meditate on him so forget about yourself and meditate on him. Let's worship Christ the Lord. Worship him. Christ the Lord. There you go, okay? Um, I am aware of what meditation was in word, but I was not aware of what meditation was in action. Nobody ever taught me. Nobody ever showed me. Nobody ever told me. Like, it wasn't, it was practiced behind closed doors. I didn't know what meditation was when I was a Christian that wasn't taught. It was told, it was talked about, but it wasn't shown. And so now as a young adult, as an adult, girl, I'm 35. Um, now as an adult, I am practicing that which I believe actually brings me the results that I desire. And this definition is beautiful because it says, it's a practice in which an individual uses a technique such as mindfulness or focusing the mind on object on an object or particular thought or activity. And that is correct. Literally, when I meditate, I sit. I focus on a mantra, a specific phrase, word, um, affirmation or whatever the case may be, but something that resonates in my spirit, right? It may be, I am powerful. I am supported. I am exactly where I need to be. And I just keep saying that over and over again in my mind while my eyes are closed. And I then may have visions of certain things of people supporting me or what support feels like for me or powerful things or imagery, right? Of me, um, walking around my warehouse with the clipboard, checking on my workers while they're doing production. That is power. Those are images of powerful things to me. And that's what I may meditate on. Like whatever that looks like for me, or even if it's none of the visualization, but it's just only repeating the same thing. I am powerful. I am supported. I am right where I need to be, or I am loved. I am happy. I am fulfilled in all things. I am loved. I am happy. I am fulfilled in all things. I just keep going over that in my mind. And I allowed that feeling of love, allowed that feeling of happiness, allowed that feeling of having everything that I need and desire and being fulfilled take over me for those 10 minutes. And the more you do it, the more trained your mind becomes to where outside thoughts don't take over. Like, what do I need to cook? Oh, I left that light on. Oh, I think the water is running. Oh, the toilet is still going. Oh, I need to change my clothes when I get up from the dryer. Oh, I need to fold that up. You will have those thoughts in the beginning. You will. Maybe all the time. I don't know how your mind may work or when you'll ever be able to focus completely at all. You can't stop thoughts from coming you can redirect your thoughts when something takes you away from the focal point of your meditation and so I am grateful that I've been able to train my mind for the purpose of gratitude every day my gratitude is always always a focal point for me 
Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Then I have thoughts or vision of my children or us out and about doing things or seeing their faces happily, you know, running towards me or them asking for something at a theme park. I focus on things that bring me peace and bring me happiness. Because you don't go into meditation and focus on problems. Mm -mm, you don't do that. You go into meditation to allow more into your existence and your experience of what satisfies you, of what pleases you, of what gives you a profound sense of pleasure. When I think about all the times I've heard my mom or other people at church say they were meditating on the word of God, it's like, okay, so were you just overturning scriptures in your head? Were you, you know, picturing God on the, Jesus on the cross dying? Like what exactly were the thoughts? Were you picturing the struggle bus? Because a lot of them would be on the struggle bus. So I'm like, is that what y'all meditate on? Because y'all do not get out of meditation at no time or period or point and then do better than what you did when before you went in to meditation. There were days from September 1st to September 30th where I would meditate and just be so at peace and feel so good and like right towards the end of my meditation, somebody's name would come up. I would think of someone specifically and then I would get come out of meditation and text them and they would be like, oh my goodness, I've been thinking about you for weeks. Oh my goodness, I've been meaning to, you know, reach out to you. Oh my goodness, I've been wanting to talk to you for so long and it would be right on time. Or I would come out of meditation later on in that day, something would happen that would be a challenge but I would have the peace and the mental fortitude to deal with it without blowing up, without spiraling, without losing it. My response to so many things during September was, okay, we going to figure it out. We still going to do that. We still going to do what we want to do though. Like I'm not tripping. I'm not coming out of myself for none of this stuff because I found my footing. I found my ground to where I didn't have to lose control. I didn't have to give up control in order to feel like I was in power. You don't, you don't, nobody trusts a person that doesn't seem confident. You trust people who are confident. You trust people at Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart with a damn vest on, with a name tag, because they work there. They know the lay of the land. They can be of assistance to you. You don't trust somebody else in regular citizen clothes like you. Your confidence is not in people that do not appear to be in control. So for me, I realized I'm the one that has to show up in control. Even as the CEO of my company, my team trusts me because I am in control. They're confident in my confidence that I know what they need to be doing. I know what they need to be using. I know what their goals are. I know what the end of day report needs to look like. I know what the production, like I am confident in that and that passes on through me to them. In my home as well as the wife, the mother, the nurturer, whatever. There are certain things that my children look to from me. Confidence. Even my husband. Confidence in me taking care of certain things. Oh, Christian got that. He know that when he flick a light on, it ain't finna not come on. He know when he go to plug in his computer, that is gonna say, because mm, Christian paid the bills. If I do, if he's doing his job and his work over here to make sure, okay, everything flowing, going, moving, I'm bringing this in, I'm making this happen, that's getting deposited to the account. We ain't got to go through and talk about what I'm going to pay this week. I know what I need to do. He's confident in that getting done. And vice versa. I'm confident in him doing his part in us working together, us being in collaborative, creative energy. And so September was a month of grounding, a month of foundation laying and setting and I have to tell you that October is off to a beautiful start on just the first day. On just on the first day of fall, <laughs> my true love sent to me a whole lot of peace and clarity. Eh, eh, eh. That's how I feel. It was good. It was good. It was delicious. It was great. Um, And I got to say this too. The meditation helped to repel everything that was sent to disturb my peace. Shout out to Ludacris. Disturbing the peace would never overhear. There were people specifically that I will talk to on a regular basis that could not stay on the phone with me for 15 minutes. Do you hear me? I took note probably around the second or third time that it happened. I was like, why are we ain't talking as long as we usually do, honey? And then it clicked. 
your peace is repelling their dysfunction. Your peace is repelling their chaos. Your peace is repelling whatever was sent to disturb it. I didn't have to say nothing. I didn't have to correct nobody. It was as if though it could not stand to be in the presence of my peace. So all I'm saying is I did my work. I did my homework. I did my research. I turned my report in and sis got an A. How we do the A? Uh, <laughs> they're gonna be they're gonna swim in the Illuminati. Not really. Um, but yeah, my peace was given, and I'm not giving it back. My peace has been given, honey. It's giving what it's supposed to give, but I'm not giving it back. So I am going to continue to meditate every day, every morning. Start my day off that way. My children aren't awake anyway, but when I wake up, I usually wake up at around 6.30, 6.42. And I say that because it's very specific. I always wake up between 6.30 or right at 6.42 every day. Um, my husband is already up upstairs working. And so I just, I'm able to flow into my day and roll into my day without disruption anyway. And so it's a really, really beautiful feeling. And I'm going to keep it going because I have proof and evidence now that it works for me. That it literally gives me the peace and the clarity and the mindfulness that I need to proceed through my day. The unlocking and the unfolding of greatness and potential lies within me. And I control that with how I respond, with how I align, even how I set my expectations for other people. Um, I'm going to say this and I'm going to go. There was an instance that happened the weekend of my daughter's birthday. My, birth, my daughter's birthday was on September 11th, which, which was a Monday. And something happened on that Thursday that had 2,000% capabilities of ruining my plans for the rest of 2023. Let me be very clear. It wasn't, it wasn't a... All day and we ain't gonna be able to do it. Mm -mm. It was a you ain't gonna be able to do nothing else for the rest of this year off of this one situation. Let me tell you something. I proceeded with my plans as if what I had found out and what I knew and what I could actually see was not real. I was like, nope, I'm not acknowledging that. Mm -mm. I'm not acknowledging that. I'm not giving that no energy and I didn't, I didn't lose it. I didn't cry. Um, I didn't even get hot like I normally do. My heart didn't, wasn't racing like it normally would, would have in the past had I not been doing my meditation. I was just nine days in at this point. My husband was calm. And I, another thing that I found is that I like to sit on the ground. Like when something is going on that could usually jilt me, I find me a seat on the floor. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it to you. I'm not going to even try. I find me a seat on the floor and I get quiet. I'm just going to sit here. Just going to sit here with my thoughts. Going to sit here and go through things on my phone. Going to go through my email. I ain't saying nothing to nobody. I ain't responding. I ain't open my mouth up to say nothing bad, nothing negative. Um, nothing that would unfold into something I don't want. I ain't blaming nobody. All I know is this is taken care of, this is handled, and I ain't giving it none of my energy, and I didn't. We proceeded with our trip. We were actually planning to go to San Antonio to SeaWorld for my daughter's birthday, and we did. And got down there, went to visit family, saw their new beautiful home. I mean, the house was sick, okay? 5,000 square feet of luxury. Hear me when I say it. Enjoyed that. Still did my meditation while we were there. We were there for two days because San Antonio was just a four hour drive from Dallas. So we drove there. We got there. Um, it's funny because every morning that I need to do my meditation, I just went downstairs, went to my cousin's theater room, closed the door, sat in there, did my meditation for 12 minutes, popped back out, started my day like, hey, like what we doing today? Because because that's how I felt, even with what I had left in Dallas, like the information and the situation that had presented itself to me and was very real, 
it was very real. It was in my experience. Let's be clear. It wasn't like a warning of something happening. It was present. It had happened. It had shocked the shit out of me. Let's be very, <laughs> it should have jilted me beyond belief. I should have been balled up, crying, messed up, not able to do nothing. It was devastating news, you guys. I acted like I did not have that news. My husband and I both proceeded as if though we had not heard or not saw what we had seen. We head back on Monday. Monday morning, we wake up. We're packing our stuff to head out. You know, saying our goodbyes and things to my cousin. <laughs> Before 10 a.m. on Monday morning, I got the news on, actually I said Thursday, it was on Friday that we got the devastating news that should have led to us not going to San Antonio on Saturday. We should not have taken that trip. Just by emotion, not nothing else that would have stopped us. Emotion alone should have stopped us from going on that trip, from being towed up by what we had found out. That did not stop us. I realized that if I allowed what I could see to control how I actually felt, I was going to continue to get more of that result. I was going to continue to get more supporting evidence and more supporting reality for what I was feeling. So I created a new reality. I'm leaving. I'm getting up out of this situation, this environment that's making me feel like this where the information was presented and I'm going somewhere new where that information is not a reality to anybody else. I did. I walked around SeaWorld like I didn't know that. Like it wasn't in the in the background and it indeed was not in my background. Or it was in the background. It wasn't in the forefront. By Monday, so we got there Saturday. Went to SeaWorld Sunday. By Monday, 10 a.m., the situation had resolved itself. There was a resolution that made me whole. Again, when I left, I was broken. In theory. By Monday, before I even got back to Dallas, it had been resolved. A solution had been presented. An answer had been given. Approval was received. And I was denying what had already transpired two days prior. That was, for me, the power of the meditation that I had been doing. Let's call it God, the universe, my creator, whatever you like to say knew that I needed to meditate and focus the whole month of September for what was going to roll around in my in my experience so that I would have the clarity and the peace and the mindfulness to address it without spiraling and losing it. And I didn't. I didn't lose it. I gained more, actually. <laughs> what I found out on that Friday, let's just say by the end of September, I was made whole four to five times more. What was broken or, or seemed to have been lost was returned to me four to five times more. It's not luck. It's not irony. It's alignment. So again, I say growing up and hearing about meditation my whole life, growing up and hearing about uh, focusing and concentrating on the word and the scripture and letting it resonate in your heart. I don't know what people actually were practicing or what they were doing because I never saw an outward manifestation of their meditation. But that was just one story of probably seven in 30 days where things unfolded for me like I would not have ever believe because I never sat down to meditate on things changing in specific situations. I would just go into my meditation with gratitude and my mantra that made me happy. I never focused on one thing. I was never like, okay, let this change. Okay. Turn this around for me. Let this work out. I can't do this. I'm stressed. I'm under pressure. Never, never aligned with any of that. Never let any of that be my thought or my verbal confession. There's a lot of work to be done here. Y'all, um, it's a lot of undoing of things that have been done. It's a lot of uh, rewiring. That's what deconstruction is about. A lot of people may believe me 
may not some people may care about this video and what i'm sharing some may not but for those of you who understand i am telling you right now you can control 100 percent of what happens to you by how you respond to it and how you're prepared to deal with it before it even happens i did not see that coming on september the 8th i did not see that coming what happened but by September 11th, I had already accepted that September 8th snooze was indeed old news. And it was not my reality that I was going to have to try to dig my way out of. No. No. And it goes even deeper, but I'm going to save y'all. I'm going to save y'all. I'm going to stop right there. Because it was attached to a person that I believe has something to do with the unfolding. And that's where I say my peace was so strong that it repelled certain people. Certain individuals could not exist in my space and still can't. And I'm okay with that. So that's just a little bit of update on where I've been and what I've been doing. I am excited. I shared the picture of, of um, me and my new warehouse. Maybe I'll do a video a day in the life. I don't know. Y'all probably don't want to see that. Um, but I'll keep showing things here and there. I am now going to record some videos of these emails y'all just sent me. Now, let me tell y'all something. I recorded a video for the email that one of my, one of the, the viewers and subscribers sent in a couple of weeks ago and it did not upload. Literally, when I went to upload it, I spent an hour and nine minutes recording a video and it was good. When I went to download it, it said the file was too large literally deleted it didn't even delete it just would not upload i lost the entire video that's why i ain't got back to it because i was like baby that was an hour sis don't have no more free hours to give okay nights and weekends let's go back to the at&t days and the early cell phones after 8 p.m that's when you might be able to catch me but if i get a snack in me and a drink it's over with <laughs> and so i i i'm just now gonna get back around to um to film in the video again so um thank y'all so much for rocking with me thank y'all for your time thank y'all for y'all energy thank y'all for y'all interest and y'all desire to see more from me um i'm excited i'm grateful i know that there may be things that some people understand some things people don't understand and i can only share from my experience i can't try to make people get everything i would love to break things down so profoundly but that ain't always me sometimes i'm just gonna give you what a guy and if that ain't enough then you gotta go find it from somewhere else because that's all i can do that's all i can be is me and so i'm gonna continue to do that i'm gonna continue to enjoy the channel share with y'all where i can answer your questions your comments your topics all of that uh, that you send in i appreciate that and i'm gonna continue to do it i'm gonna keep giving what i can give and hopefully you guys will stick around for the journey I love y'all. I have enjoyed talking to y'all and I will catch y'all in the next one. Um, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed the content. I would love to add you to my Two Cents crew. Until next time, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Bye.